back to some NBA and let's talk about the Miami Heat because anytime you have a, a team that's able to win their first championship in franchise history or a team that's able to win a, a championship or a Super Bowl, we always got to talk about the loser as well. And when you look at the Miami Heat, it was a memorable run for the Heat in the postseason this year. The Miami Heat were the first team since 1977 to rank last in points per game during the regular season and reach the NBA Finals. They were the first team to reach the Finals with a negative points per game differential during the regular season since the 1959 Los Angeles Lakers. They are the second eighth seed to reach the NBA Finals. The previous eighth seed that made the NBA Finals were the New York Knicks. That was one of my favorite teams in NBA history. They had Spreewell, I believe, Allen Houston on that Knicks team. They lost to the Spurs, I believe, in that NBA Finals. But so that's the Miami Heat. And so when I look at the Miami Heat, remember, this Miami Heat team, they lost the opening play-in game against Trey Young and the Atlanta Hawks. And then in the elimination play-in game, the Miami Heat, with three minutes left to go in that game, they were down three to the Chicago Bulls. And for them to be able to go on this run in the first round, they beat the Milwaukee Bucks in five games. Jimmy Butler dropped 56 points in game four. They follow that up. They go to round two, and they beat the New York Knicks. I picked the Heat in that series. I picked the Heat in seven over the Knicks. But remember, in that series, Jimmy Butler, he injured his ankle in game one and didn't even play a game two, and the Miami Heat were able to beat the Knicks in the conference semifinals in six games. They get to the Eastern Conference Finals, and they go up against the mighty Boston Celtics. And remember, the Boston Celtics, they were the second seed in the East for a majority of the season. They had the best record in the NBA. And this was the previous Eastern Conference champions that had Jason Tatum, that had Jalen Brown. And the Miami Heat, they were underdogs in this series going into it against the Celtics because there was a significant talent gap between the Celtics and the Heat. And in that series, the Miami Heat took a commanding 3-0 lead, and they did lose three straight to the Celtics. The Celtics battled back, but the Heat beat the Celtics in a game seven in TD Garden. In TD Garden, the Miami Heat went into Boston and beat Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum and the Boston Celtics and sent them to Cancun as well. So, I said going into the finals that no matter what happens in the NBA finals, the Miami Heat, they have already overachieved. They've already overachieved and exceeded expectations, being able to beat the number one and the number two seeds in the Milwaukee Bucks and the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference. They had already exceeded expectations once they got to the NBA finals. And we all knew that they were overmatched. They were overmatched in the finals. The Denver Nuggets with Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray and that supporting cast with Aaron Gordon, with KCP, with Michael Porter Jr., with Bruce Brown. They were the better team in the NBA finals. The Miami Heat, they have Jimmy Butler and they have Bam. And I thought Bam had a great finals performance. and. I thought he played well throughout the entire playoffs overall. But Bam out of Bayou is not a number two option on a championship team. And when it comes to Jimmy Butler, because Jimmy Butler is for sure the Miami Heat's best player, but I felt like Jimmy Butler ran out of gas in the NBA Finals. He really, really did. Even in game five, Jimmy, he had... 21 points, but look at point his points by quarter in game five. The first quarter, zero points. Second quarter, he had eight points. 
third quarter, zero points. He had 13 points in four, in the fourth quarter. And in the last six minutes of the fourth quarter, Jimmy finally decided to start playing. And he had hit a couple shots. And he had got into a rhythm. And the Miami Heat had got back into the game. But I just felt like throughout the entire NBA Finals that Jimmy Butler wasn't himself. I don't know if he's dealing with an injury. I'm waiting for the report to come out here in a few weeks or over the next couple of months about how Jimmy Butler has been dealing with some type of injury. I know he injured his ankle in, in the conference semifinals, but I thought he had recovered from that ankle injury. Maybe he hasn't fully recovered. And that's the reason why we saw Jimmy Butler struggle the way that we did. But as great as Jimmy Butler is, and I believe that Jimmy Butler is a star in this league. I believe that Jimmy Butler fits Heat culture perfectly, and he is the perfect player for the Miami Heat and being able to lead them to being a championship contender year in and year out. I really feel like Jimmy Butler, Eric Spolstra, Pat Riley, that is a, is a great mix when it comes to a championship contender in the NBA. He fits Heat culture. He really, really does. And, and, and you see now with Jimmy, with the Heat, you see why it didn't work in Minnesota. You see why it didn't work in Philly. Because Jimmy Butler is different. He built different. And I love his tenacity. And he wants to win so bad to where he'll challenge you. I remember a few years ago, you saw Jimmy Butler and Eric Spostra nearly coming to blows on the sideline. We saw it. Jimmy Butler was literally going at Eric Spolster, but I give Eric Spolster credit because Eric Spolster wasn't backing down from Jimmy. You saw Yadonis Haslam had to step in between them. But Jimmy Butler, he is one of the best players in the NBA. He is a bona fide star in this league. But I don't believe Jimmy Butler is a superstar. I believe that in order for the Miami Heat to be championship contenders who can actually win a championship because they're championship contenders. But I'm talking about a team that can actually win a championship. I believe that the Miami Heat need to bring in a superstar and pair up a superstar alongside Jimmy Butler and Bam out of Bayou. I think Bam would be a perfect third option on a championship team. I believe Jimmy Butler would be a perfect second option on a championship team. And if I'm Pat Riley, and if and I'm Eric Spostra, I am getting on the phone today with the Portland Trailblazers, and I'm making the call for Damian Lillard. Could y'all imagine Dame time in Miami with Jimmy Butler and Bam? I believe that Damian Lillard is the missing piece for the Miami Heat. It would be a match made in heaven for Dame and the Miami Heat. Because Dame, he doesn't play great defense, but Jimmy Butler is your best defender on the perimeter. Bam Adebayo is a great interior defender as well. But what Damian Lillard is known for and what the Miami Heat need, Dame is a closer. Dame Lillard is one of the most clutch players in the NBA. I'm a Dame fan. We've seen Dame send home James Harden. We've seen Dame send home Paul George and Russell Westbrook. This brother is big time, and he is a superstar in the NBA. And I believe if the Miami Heat can get their hands on Damian Lillard, not only will they be the favorites in the East, they would be the favorites overall for a, as a team that could win an NBA championship. I would throw them right there in the mix with the Denver Nuggets and the Phoenix Suns and other teams who I believe are championship contenders going into the next season. But you look at the Miami Heat, Butler, Adebayo, and Duncan Robinson and Tyler Hero are all signed through 2026. Matt Struess, Gabe Vinson, Kevin Love, and Cody Zeller are all unrestricted free agents. If I'm the Heat, I would try to keep Gabe Vinson. I like the way Gabe Vinson performed this year in the playoffs. 
I thought he he really played at a very very high level, and he 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 basically put his name on the map. He put his name on the map as being a point guard in the NBA who can perform well in the playoffs. Gabe Vincent was great. I thought there were times where he was like that third option on the Heat during their playoff run. And so I also feel like when it comes to the Heat overall, because of their supporting cast, like Max Struess, like Caleb Martin, like Gabe Vincent, like Kevin Love and, you know, other players that they have, Duncan Robinson, because they played so well during the Heat playoff run, I believe that they could be assets in a move to bring another star to Miami. And make no mistake about it, NBA stars, they have no problem going to Miami and hooping. They ain't got no problem with it. Miami, Palm Trees, Ocean Drive, these NBA players ain't got a problem or issue with going to Miami. It is, one of, it's not a big market like L.A. or like New York, but it's Miami. It's Miami. And, and so I believe that because their role, their undrafted players and role players played so well during their playoff run, you can now put them in a potential deal to bring in a superstar to pair up with Damian Lillard and Bam out of Bayou. And so also, too, when it comes to Miami, before I move on to my next topic, I say this all the time. <laughs> I give the Miami Heat players a lot of credit for being able to focus the way that they are able to focus year in and year out. You got to think about it. They're not playing in Oklahoma City. Okay? They're not playing in one of these markets that's, you know, that, that, that's not much is going on. They are playing in Miami, Florida. They playing in Miami. Palm trees. Nightlife. Ocean Drive. I mean, I, I, I can understand why a player who plays for the Miami Heat or the Miami Dolphins could possibly be distracted. I can understand why. And somehow, some way, Eric Spostra and Pat Riley, they are able to have their players focused because they're championship contenders every year. And for them to be able to focus the way that they are able to focus, considering the distractions that's going on around them down there in Miami, it's a testament to how committed these players are and the Miami Heat organization is to being a championship contender and being one of the best teams in the NBA. And when we talk about cultures and best organizations in the NBA, we got to talk about the Denver Nuggets. We got to always talk about the San Antonio Spurs with Greg Popovich. The Boston Celtics deserve to be in that conversation as well. But the Miami Heat are one of the best organizations in the NBA. From Pat Riley down and to the players, they all are committed to the Heat being one of the best teams in the NBA, and they are a disciplined basketball team. But they need another star to pair up with Jimmy Butler and Bam out of Bayou before they can become a team that I believe that can ultimately win an NBA championship. Because in the last four years, the Heat have been in the finals two out of the last four years. They got to the NBA finals against LeBron and AD in a bubble a few years ago. But they, they haven't been able to get over that hump. And I think adding a superstar, the caliber of a Damian Lillard, would put them over the hump as being a championship contender who can actually win an NBA championship.